Hi everybody, this is Stephen Roselle, Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to go over some of the new Bonus Tools features for 2014. We have now posted the installers for My Bonus Tools 2014, and with that, we have some updated documentation, and if you just go to the What's New section, you can see that we've added uh, about 12 or so uh, new tools. So I'm going to go over uh, some of these. I don't know if we'll get to all of them, but I'll go over some of the some some of the more interesting ones. Uh, we've also updated a number of tools as well. So there've been some fixes or tweaks to some of the existing tools. So let's take a look at some of the some of the new stuff. So of course, bonus tools uh, adds as an extra menu at the end of the main Maya menu set, and if we open that up, it mimics the main UI in terms of the kind of categorization and organization. So the first new tool that we'll talk about is under the modify section and it's a tool simply called uh, move selected to camera and it also creates a hotkey so if you haven't actually created a hotkey for control F then this will actually add the hotkey automatically if you've already created a custom one then it will just ignore that. But basically the idea is if you're working in Maya and you want to frame on an object, you can select that object and hit F to frame in on that object and that will reposition the camera to that object. However, if you're working on a larger scene and you have an object off to the side and you want that camera to be moved to the, the or sorry, that object to be moved to where the camera is, now you can apply the move selected to camera and that will move the object to the camera. So it's basically the opposite effect. It does work with multiple objects. So if I select, say, for instance, these two objects, and again, I have a hotkey, control F, that will move both of those objects to center uh, in the camera view. And it uses the active panel, so you can do this in any of the, the panels. Now, from a modeling standpoint, we've added several new tools, one of which is, uh, or actually two of which are kind of related, and they are tools for quickly removing detail on a mesh based on edge loops and edge rings. So if you go under modeling, we've got, again, a couple of tools in here, uh, one of which is the delete edge ring tool and the delete edge loop tool. So let's start with the loop tool. The loop tool will basically allow you to interactively click on an edge and then by clicking on that edge, you'll remove its associated loop. So I can basically continue to click on edges, essentially removing detail on my object. And you can do this in any direction, so obviously I can go in this direction, I can go vertically or horizontally, depending on what I'm trying to do. Let's go back a couple of steps and we'll talk about the edge ring tool. The collapse edge ring tool works in the opposite way, similar to edge, the edge loop tool. This will work with the ring, so it will go around and it will find the average point. So if I click here, it will actually go all the way around and then merge essentially those edges at their center point. So you can work in either direction here as well. So I can average there, I can average there, and just keep averaging to reduce the detail. So this is a simple example on a sphere, but obviously this would be really useful for controlling edge flow on something like a, a character mesh. Another modeling tool that's new that can be useful for deleting detail on an object is a tool called the Delete Connected Edges tool. And what that will do is it will work on either faces, edges, or vertices, and by clicking Avert, it will delete the corresponding edges. So I can basically come in here and quickly delete um, an entire, and we can go into multi-mode, by the way, to use this an entire series of connected edges. If I work in edge mode, then it will connect, delete all of the associated edges. So I click one edge, and it deletes all the neighboring edges. And likewise, if I work in face mode, it will find all of the connected edges, and it will delete those. So you can quickly go in here and start to add, or, or rather, quickly remove detail um, by removing or deleting all of the associated edges and again and or vertices. Another handy little modeling tool is this tool called Convert Selection to Perimeter Edges. What this basically allows you to do is essentially go in and select a series of faces. It's a little hard to see here. If I turn off my texturing you can see what's selected here. But I could basically go in and select kind of an arbitrary selection of faces. Let's just say something like that. And then I can actually use this tool to convert that to the perimeter edges. So the reason that's useful is that now I can use this as a, either a, a modeling border or a texturing border. For instance, I could 
take these and I could apply something like a attach and that would actually break that out into a separate shell or I could do this, something similar from a UV perspective. I could come in here and you can see how I've got that textured right now. Uh, if I turn on my texture borders you can see I've only have borders at the perimeter and actually let's go back a step. There we go. And now I can go in and I can just use my cut and that would actually cut out that border allowing me to essentially extract the texture shell. So that becomes its own unique texture shell even though it's actually still one solid object. So again this can work in either view so I can grab a bunch of faces in here and then convert to perimeter and then I can use something like my cut UVs tool to essentially again extract out that particular UV shell. So again that's called the convert selection to perimeter edges. We've added a couple of handy UV editing tools that essentially allow you to do similar or related things. So if you go under bonus tools UV editing we now have two tools called nudge UVs and tile UVs. We'll start with the tile UVs. This basically allows you to set the number of tiles that you want to offset for instance just by one and then you can offset the entire shell and actually I have to go in and actually select them but you can offset the entire shell in either direction basically allowing you to create essentially a tiled series of UV shells so you could put these in the negative or you could put these in the positive and again you can work in multiples as well if you wanted to skip three tiles ahead now when I apply this that will move that exactly three tiles out so this can be useful for laying out um, different uh, tile UV tiles for to be associated with different textures and then related to tile UVs we have a nudge UVs tool which simply allows you to nudge for lack of a better word uh, one or more UVs in a given direction so you set a multiplier and that controls the amount of nudging or moving essentially and you can see here if I pull in what's actually happening and let's actually grab a maybe three or four of these. If I nudge these you can see those are all offsetting by whatever my increment value is and if you look in the 3D view you can see this a little more clearly and let's bump that out you can actually see the texture moving in 3D relative to the way the UVs are moving in 2D and again you can move in either direction and it works on whatever UVs happen to be selected. We also have a couple of display and rendering related tools and these two tools are actually kind of similar if you go under bonus tools display and we'll pull this off we have a new tool called toggle x-ray per mesh so what you'll notice is if we go into the panel here I can go in and I can basically set my shading to be x-ray and all of these objects will essentially x-ray allowing me to see through them to whatever is on the back side that affects the entire panel or whatever happens to be in this panel, uh, whatever camera happens to be in this panel. Sometimes you want to affect just the object itself. So we could take a single object and we can toggle the x-ray mode for that object and now just that object becomes transparent and the other object will become regular, opaque or whatever. So now I can go in and I can toggle this one as well and now you can see I can see through both of the outside objects but I can't see through the inside object. You can of course grab all of these and if you just click on this twice it will actually sync the display of all three objects or again I can go in and I can work on any individual object and make that transparent or x-ray. A related tool is under rendering and this could be used for d display purposes as well but if I tear off the rendering menu you can see here I've got an add transparency attribute option so this works with software rendering but it also works with display if you are using viewport 2.0 so you have to switch viewport 2.0 on and then I can grab any given object and I can apply a transparency attribute to that object what that will do is it will give me an attribute on the object that in turn connects to the transparency of the shader it also affects things like specularity so if I have specularity on my object I can go in and apply that and it will affect the specularity so you can see each object now has its own individual transparency value so one thing to point out about this is that each of these is actually sharing the same shader so regardless of the fact that they're sharing the same shader they can have their own transparency value and I could actually come in here and I could switch to for instance a different texture 
I like to grab, for instance, a ramp texture. It's just a sign. And now you can see that uh, if I go in here and refresh this, all I have to do is just simply say add transparency, and that will refresh the parameters, and it will reapply the transparency. And again, it's unique to each object, even though they're sharing the same uh, texture and the same material. I should also point out that this does indeed work with rendering. So if I were to go in here and do a software render of this, you can see that the software render picks up the transparency of the object as well. So what this would ultimately allow you to do is essentially animate the transparency. So I could basically keyframe this to zero and then move forward in time and keyframe this to one. And it's a really quick and easy way of fading out the transparency of a, of a given object and having it basically appear and disappear. So it's similar to the visibility, except instead of being a Boolean, it's a, um, a float essentially that can be animated. One of the cooler new tools is under Windows, and it's called Assembly Manager, also known as Pipe or the Pipe Assembly Manager. And what this is is both a front-end and a back-end tool for scene assembly. So we introduced scene assembly in my 2013 extension, and we have expanded on that in 2014. And this tool essentially automates the process of creating and accessing scene assemblies. So it builds scene assembly, it builds all the representation of the objects associated with that assembly, or the files associated with, with that assembly, and then it gives you a front end for essentially accessing those. So for instance, if I wanted to bring in this object here, I get a list of all the scene assemblies that I've built. I simply double click on that object. That brings the default representation, which is the locator, into my scene, and then I can right click to access the different assembly uh, representations. So for instance, I can bring in a bounding box, and actually that's pretty large, or I can go in and I can bring in something like a GPU cache, which is a non-editable version, or I can bring in the actual fully editable full resolution Maya scene file. And again, this just uses the scene assembly um, workflow under the hood and this gives you kind of a higher level uh, tool for managing those scene assemblies. We will be posting additional information about this on the bonus tools resource page, so you can check out the documentation. So in the documentation, you'll see we get a general description, but we've also included a more detailed document, Pipe Assembly Manager readme.txt, which will give you some more detailed instructions about how to use the tool, and then as I said, we'll be posting information on the bonus tools resource page with uh, more details including some tutorials and tips and tricks uh, movies. For people writing scripts we've added a couple of little utilities under bonus tools window under script editor we have two tools they've actually been around for quite a while but we've decided to go ahead and par integrate them as part of bonus tools and that is um, one is a print option var which will basically print all of the variables associated um, with a given string. So these are option vars that are used to store, for instance, um, UI uh, parameters. So for instance, we can go in here and type in something like bt underscore and do a search, and you'll notice that it has found all of the bonus tools associated option vars. And these are, again, parameters that are associated with a given uh, user interface or window. Another example is the print global vars, and this is more MEL specific, whereas option vars can be used by, by Python as well. These are more MEL specific, so if you're writing MEL scripts and you wanted to find any MEL script with the word, uh, or rather MEL variable with the word move in it, you can do a search, and actually I've only found one. Uh, if you actually go in and use either of these without entering a string and just say all, then it will print all of the variables that are being used in memory at this time. And that's true with the option vars as well. So again, a handy little utility for anybody writing scripts. Now the last new feature is pretty straightforward. And what you may have noticed with bonus tools in the past is that some of the tools, for instance, if I go under modeling, you can see here the draw reduce tool has been disabled. So it's grayed out in the menu. That basically means that that's a plugin that has not been loaded yet. So if I go under Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and I just simply find the Draw Reduce tool, click Load, it still doesn't show up under, and traditionally it still doesn't show up as an active tool, so we've added a simple little setting 
that allows you to refresh the bonus tools menu and that will basically rebuild the menu and essentially accommodate for any new uh, tools that have been loaded. So now you can see that Draw Reduce has been activated in the bonus tools menu. So a very straightforward little change but uh, prevents you from having to restart Maya. So that's a breakdown of everything that's changed in bonus tools 2014. Thanks. Bye.